Hello everyone and welcome to uh, two really incredible games from the semi-finals of the Women's FIDE World Cup. Uh, we have uh, Anna Muzichuk of Ukraine versus Nurgil Salimova. Anna Muzichuk of course needs no introduction, she won pretty much everything there is to win in the chess world except that uh, prestigious title of the actual uh, Women's World Champion. And uh, of course, you would very much like to qualify for the candidates tournament to challenge the reigning world champion Ju Wenjun for the title. Uh, but it hasn't been easy because, uh, well, while, um, uh, for example, Ho Yifan was competing, you just couldn't win. And she, uh, she, she she won the world championship four times. Then you had Ju Wenjun is now uh, four years in a row world champion. Tan Jong-gi uh, also won two times. Uh, then before that, you had Anna Oshenina. Uh, also, uh, Anna's sister, Maria Mozichuk, uh, was, uh, I believe, 2015 uh, uh, Women's World champion uh, and okay you had you had a couple of um, uh, other names um, you know long long time ago like Alexandra Kosteniuk maybe in 2008 and uh, before that uh, Antonetta Stefanova and uh, well, it's uh, you know it's not easy to win everything, but of course she she wants to try. And uh, opposing her is Nurgil Salimova of Bulgaria, uh, who is not even a grandmaster. She's an international master, and she's just crushing everyone with a very very uh, impressive style of play. She just you know sacrifices a pawn, sacrifices a second pawn, goes for the attack, and she crushes her opponent. So how will this fare against Anna Muzichuk? Uh, let's check it out and see what happened uh, in this um, matchup, and who will face Alexandra Goryachkina in the final of the FIDE Women's World Cup. So let's check it out. Uh, Anna Muzichuk has the white pieces and she opens with pawn to e4. We have pawn to c6. Uh, Salimova goes for the Karakhan defense. d4, d5. We have knight to c3 and d captures on e4. So the uh, accepted variation. Knight captures on e4, the main line, and now knight to f6. And I was always annoyed when someone played this against me with the black pieces. Uh, because uh, I know the top move is to capture on f6, and I really hate trading pieces early on in the opening, uh, so I was always trying to move the knight somewhere, but it's just not very good. I mean, you play something like knight to g3, already h5 is coming, followed by c5, and it's just, um, black is getting all, all of this counterplay for nothing. So, okay, you have to capture on f6, of course, uh, Anna does that, we have e captures on f6, and now pawn to c3, uh, strengthening the center here. Bishop to d6, we have bishop to d3, and here we have cap. Castles. We have queen to c2, and now rook to e8 with check. We have bishop to e3, and now a uh, pawn to h5, as the pawn was hanging on h7, so you might as well advance it all the way. We have knight to f3, knight to d7, and here we have queenside castles. Of course, you're not going to castle kingside, it would be silly. Here, queenside castles, and you want to start attacking that black king. Uh, and here, there is a game where knight to f8 was played, but here we have pawn to b5. Uh, Salimova goes for the attack, and it is now as of movie 11 that we have a completely new game. So uh, by playing b5, of course, you weaken the c6 pawn and Anna tries to exploit that by playing pawn to d5. This also weakens the b5 pawn. Uh, and Salimova finds a very, very uh, interesting way of uh, how to sacrifice for the attack. She plays pawn to c5. Now gives up the b5 pawn. And you really should capture this. Otherwise, you, I mean, you've just allowed this free expansion of the b and c pawn. So bishop captures on b5 and now rook to b8. Okay, so for the price of one pawn, you get your rook on the semi-open b file. We have bishop to c6 and now comes rook to e7. Just nicely on pinning. Uh, we have h3. Now, of course, you want to start expanding on the king side. Go after the black king and knight to b6 uh, and now of course you don't want to see the knight on uh, c4 so knight to d2 and now pawn to f5 okay making some progress for the price of that one pawn and here you should really consider a move like bishop to g5 it's uh okay it for it um uh forces black to play f6 and now after you move, you might even allow this. But okay, your bishop is out of the game for the moment, but you weaken the black's king side uh, uh, substantially, and you can now start undermining those pawns with move like g3, h4, and then you're going to get your pieces back into the game. But in the game, knight to b3 was played, going after the c5 pawn, but it doesn't matter as, uh, of course, um, Nurgil uh, prepared for that. Knight to c4. Now the knight cannot move from b3 because rook captures and b2 would just end the game. So here we have rook h to e1, centralizing both of the rooks and now knight captures on e3. Uh, also f4 was a very interesting choice. We have f captures and now pawn to g6. So you don't have to worry about your pawn here. We have knight back to d2. Now the knight is coming to c4 and bishop to g3. Okay, attacks the rook. We have rook e2 and now bishop to a6. And look how all of a sudden uh, Nurgil's bishops uh, come alive. Uh, the, the bishop uh, very nicely placed on this diagonal and this bishop on this diagonal. 
So if you don't want to lose the rook, you absolutely have to play pawn to c4. So pawn to c4 is played, and now we have bishop to e5. Again, very nicely going after the b2 pawn, and now we have pawn to b3. So okay, you've created this beautiful pawn chain here, but this also somehow somewhat uh, weakens white uh, queen side. And uh, uh, look at this beautiful attacking move by Salimova, bishop back to g7. This frees up uh, the path for the black queen to enter the attack via the f6 square, or maybe via the a5 square, uh, could all be very, very important later on we have pawn to e4 and now bishop to c8 now it's time to shift the bishop over to the other diagonal and this is also a very instructive way of how to uh, how to consider candidate moves your opponent plays e4 and you're thinking all right i don't want to see e captures on f5 uh you know in this position uh, and i also don't like my bishop on a6 it's it's a pretty useless piece so we combine the two uh, uh you know useless ideas and we uh, make a, a useful one bishop to c8 just uh, defends f5 and now he captures an f5 is something white definitely doesn't want to do and allow the bishop to gain control of this diagonal so also a very useful way of thinking about your candidate moves rook dt e1 and now f captures on e4 we have rook captures on e4 rook captures on e4 and now uh, you have to play knight captures on e4 to control the f6 square but here we have queen captures on e4 and now queen to f6 is crushing but uh, salimova does not play it probably because queen to f6 uh, okay maybe you don't see the the follow-up but after bishop to f5 it's very hard to, to to find the move for white she does something very similar uh, only she doesn't go with the queen to f6 she goes queen to a5 she still wants to get to the c3 square but now we have queen to f4 attacking the rook on b8 and now look at this queen to c3 with check king to d1 and now uh, of course you cannot continue the attack because the rook on b8 is hanging uh, or can you that's exactly what you always have to ask yourself uh, bishop to f5 uh, not just sacrificing the rook but sacrificing the rook uh with with check i mean who who does that look at this and now the only way to survive this position is to not capture the rook of course you have to play rook to e3 still black will be better let's say queen to a1 checking to e2 but you are you are surviving but after this bishop to f5 move uh, anna accepted the free rook the queen capture some b8 was played because it comes with check who could resist that uh, king to h7 and now queen back to f4 seemingly uh, defending against everything but now look at this bishop to h6 and now look at this mighty bishop pair I, i'd say this is worth more than one rook uh, queen to f2 you have to guard the knight otherwise it's just checkmate the queen and bishop do a very good job going after the knight uh, and here we have uh, bishop to c2 with check and this is the only way to end the game it's basically a forced checkmate in three uh, because if you start with queen to c2 check and okay even you win the knight here the king goes to f1 well there's no continuation you're just down material you're, you're down the exchange and the the, the, the pass deep on will destroy you but after bishop to c2 there is no escape it's a forced mate uh, and of course it was in this position on move 32 that um, uh, Anna Muzichuk resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here now if king to c1 of course it's the, the the oldest trick in the book bishop to d3 check now guards d2 square king d1 and queen to c2 will be checkmate and if you don't do that if you start running away with the king well then it's just a mate in one with queen to d3 so uh, very nicely done by uh, by Salimova with the black pieces. And let me just uh, load, uh, sorry, not that. I need to load something real quickly because I have to uh, switch uh, uh, colors. I even prepared this for you uh, so we don't have to. All right, so there we have, nope, not that. Sorry about that. Sorry, just give me give me one second. very strange that I don't have it here oh it's there okay there we go oh uh, I have I haven't saved it oh man that's that's really really silly of me uh so okay you can just rewind uh, let's say uh 30 seconds while i while i do this it's gonna take me like 30 seconds to achieve this sorry about that i did do it i just have no idea why the computer didn't save it so sorry about that really hate it when that happens there we go there we go all right sorry about that Uh, there we go.
really sorry. Uh, so uh, this is the second game that we are showing. Salimova now has the white pieces uh, because uh, this was the first game of the Rapid that we've just shown. And then Anna retaliated in the second game also with the black pieces. And now this is the faster Rapid. This was the 25 minute Rapid section. This is the 10 minute Rapid section. And now Salimova is the one with the white pieces. And again, this game is just, it's something, uh, something that you would expect, uh, you know, uh, if Morphe played Anderson on a bad day, that, that that's what this game is like. I mean, look at this. Pawn to d4 by Nurgo. We have pawn to d5 and now c4. And Anna, of course, goes for d captures on c4. She goes for the queen's gambit accepted. And it is the, uh, I believe, the new way to play nowadays if you really want to have um, uh, winning chances with black here, uh, you know, with sharpest lines as possible. Knight f3, we have knight to f6, e3, e6, and now bishop captures on c4. We have pawn to c5, again, the absolute ma main line of the Queen's Gambit decline, all, all top moves. We have castles here uh, and pawn to a6. And here, uh, believe it or not, uh, Salimova plays the 12th most popular move in the position. Here, d captures on c5 is the most popular. Any other move you can imagine, b3, I mean, they're all <laughs> very much playable. But rook to e1 is the 12th most uh, most played move. And it has been played before by some very strong names like Mamidaro played it, uh, Alireza played it, Grishu played it, um, Gukesh played it, uh, Grigori Oparin even defeated Hans Niemann with Rook to E1. But all in all, maybe 30, maybe 30 to 50 games all in all played with this Rook to E1 move. So it's uh, very, very rare, and it's very hard to imagine that Anna has something prepared for this. So Knight to C6, Knight to C3, and now Pawn to B5. Of course, you chase away the Bishop. Bishop back to D3, and now Bishop to B7. So the pretty standard setup of the Queen's Gambit declined. A4, and now Pawn to B4. We have Knight to E4, and C captures on D4. And this is a well-known position. It has been reached uh, in the Tal Memorial Tournament of... Um, 2021, it was the so-called Lindoris Abbey tournament, uh, and Alexander Predke had it against Olga Badelka, uh, where uh, uh, in that game E captures on D4 was played. But here we have Knight captures on F6, and it is now as of move 12 that we have a completely new game. So, okay, G captures on F6, E captures on D4, and now Knight to A5. And it's a very useful move, of course. You control the B3 and C4 squares. In the future, you might go B3, you might go Bishop to D5 to C4, you might go Bishop to D5 knight to c4 you might go bishop to b5 bishop to b3 also the rook is coming to e8 so you will have full control over that c4 squ uh, square so knight to a5 definitely makes sense with bishop to f4 uh, and now rook to c8 by anna we have queen to e2 and now bishop to d6 countering this strong bishop on f4 but now bishop to h6 and now look at this position what do you make of this uh, anna's king is on e8 uh, and okay, uh, it can't really castle, but how safe is it? How safe is that king there with uh, the queen and the rook occupying the e file? Well, knight to b3 attacks the rook. We have rook a to d1, and now comes queen to a5. Anna struggling to find moves here as, uh, well, there just aren't any, and uh, uh, Nurgul takes advantage of this remarkably with pawn to d5. And now the problem is you cannot allow d captures on e6. That just ends the game. Uh, and of course, if bishop captures, which is black's only move, then you no longer defend the a6 pawn. And look at what happens here. Bishop captures on d5. Bishop captures on a6, attacks the rook, and now rook to c5. Uh, we have bishop to b5 with check. Nicely, the pawn on a4 defends the bishop here. King to d8, as of course the f8 square is covered, and now comes bishop to e3, attacking the rook. Here, rook to c7 was played by Anna, but now feel free to pause the video and try to find the, the absolutely crushing um, uh, series of moves that, you know, uh, end the game on the spot, uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, spotting this incredible idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is Rook Captures on D4. We can also do that in slow motion, but no, there is another move I want to do in slow motion. Uh, so, okay, E Captures on D5, and now comes the move you had to see in order to play Rook Captures on D5. And that, of course, is Bishop to B6. Look at this. Bishop comes to B6, and you might be wondering, but why Bishop to B6? Aren't we just giving away a free piece here? Yes, but what about queen to e8? Isn't that just checkmate? Yes, it is. And of course, it was in this position on move 23 that Anna Muzichuk resigned the game. And uh, well, as there is nothing more to be done here. And Nurgil Salimova uh, goes into the finals of the Women's FIDE World Cup, where she will face Alexandra Goryachkina uh, for the 
for for first place of the of the FIDE World Cup. She already qualifies for the candidates tournament. And uh, uh, interestingly, I thought that if you qualify for the candidates, you uh, automatically get your Grandmaster title. Like Bobby Fischer, he qualified for the candidates tournament, and they just gave him the uh, the, the Grandmaster title. He didn't have it back then, uh, but uh, she doesn't get it. She only gets a, a Grandmaster norm only if she gets first place in the FIDE World Cup. So if she defeats uh, Alexander Goryachkina, then she will be immediately granted the Grandmaster title. Uh, but okay, I mean, if she if she already is in the finals of the FIDE World Cup, if she's going to the candidates, she will no doubt achieve the the, the Grandmaster title uh, soon enough. But it would be I don't know if you already get to the candidates tournament, you should have um, you know maybe be granted the Grandmaster title. But at least it's gonna be really really awesome if she actually wins the candidates tournament with an international master title. And imagine if we had an international master being a a, a world champion. I mean that'd be just that'd be just really weird. Uh, but okay, yeah, and for those of you who are wondering why she resigned, uh, I did explain it, but maybe you'd like me to show it. There's no move here. I mean, you either give up the queen or or uh, even if you give up the queen, it doesn't really matter. You think <laughs> after here, she will just sacrifice the queen and after rook captures, rook captures and eight will be checkmate. And this happens regardless of what you do. You can take the bishop, you can ignore the bishop, you can you can run away with king to c8. Okay, then you don't, um, then, then you just lose the queen. But still, I mean, it's... Uh, it, wonderful, wonderful position. I mean, when's the last time you've seen something like this? Absolutely crushing. Uh, so yeah, that's the game, or rather those were the games. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Very nicely done by Salimova. We'll, she, uh, we'll see uh, how she will do against Alexandra Goryachkina, who is also, you know, an absolute beast. She just crushes everyone. And uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a you know a, a real fight. So uh, uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Srini Vaskashyap, uh, uh, BulletChestThriller.com, Gustavo Adolfo Chaves, uh, Michael Shui, and Yun Yang for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the FIDE World Cup uh, until it finishes. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day. And really sorry about not having the template ready. I have no idea how it happened. I mean, re really sorry about that. Uh, see you soon.